You're listening to Chugging Bleach, the only podcast where the bounce count. Welcome to Chugging Bleach, the anime review podcast where we review all of Bleach. Yep, all of it. I'm your host, Bob Video Games, and with me as usual, Anime to Anime. This is a dream, right? Dr. Agro. The allegations have won. And Chris Wolfhart. This is the point where the wheels come off the car. I thought they came off last time, but all right. This set of episodes is when it happened in the manga, because I didn't watch the anime, I read the manga, where every single person I know was who was reading Police was like, fuck this. Ooh, wow. Every single one. This has this chunk of episodes has some of the most memed on dumbest shit in Bleach in it, for sure. I'm so excited to talk about really big deals this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, this is definitely the part of the when I was reading the manga, I alone came to the conclusion of that seems incorrect. Maybe the fans, the translators got it wrong because it seemed <laughs> irrational. <laughs> they, they would have written this. <laughs> um, but anyway, this time we're covering episodes 266 through 291, also known as the Aran Car Part 6, Fall of the Espada, the first half of it, because we only did half of the season this time because it's uh, like 50 some episodes. And other places on the internet call it the Aran Car Downfall Arc. I wonder what's going to happen to these guys. Yeah, mm. I wonder what's going to happen. It's a real mystery. One that hopefully we can solve, and maybe even solve early, with the power of Patreon. Chris, can you tell me how we can do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you want to get early access to this show and other many other benefits, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get early access to this show, and if you're listening to it on YouTube, that $5 a month will get you the next episode right then, probably. Patreon.com slash Podcast. Thank you, Chris. And this time, you said you wanted to go through the episodes a little differently, right? Yes, I figured we would just discuss the events, like each fight, perhaps, mm -hmm. I think would be a good one. Way to go about and just talk about our thoughts on it, because there's a lot of cutting. And unlike the filler arc, it's not like a very continuous thing where somebody is dying in every episode. In fact, kind of not as much as you would like to happen happens in these 26 episodes. In fact, uh, perhaps the start of this might be an, a, a fight that should have been three episodes at most that lasts seven. That might be how these start. <laughs> in theory, we don't, we yeah, we actually don't know. know this. <laughs> this is also an aside, but they do this. They started this weird thing here where they show clips of the episode before. For the OP. It's the worst. Mm -hmm. I, it I, sucks. I, I hate it. Yeah, I, I just had to not watch the OP many, many times because it's like, it's going to spoil the whole episode. And I'm going to spoil <laughs> our episode a little bit now. Uh, that sucks because I wanted to watch more of that OP. Yeah, that's a good OP. It's a good OP. Which we will mm -hmm. be reviewing later in this episode. And I may hate it by then. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fickle and unreasonable person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locking the comments section right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Bleach Podcast, too controversial for you two. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Giku was right. <laughs> no, don't ever say that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Not really a point by point recap, but let's talk about Ulkiora versus Ichigo. That was pretty cool. Yeah, this is definitely the best part of these episodes, I would say. It sure is, but there's still a lot of stupid shit. For example, all the shit Ulkiora keeps saying about Orihime changing and being one of them doesn't mean anything, and I'm pretty sure is never addressed again after Ulkiora's dead. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, no. I, I think that literally just comes to nothing. Yeah. That's just a thing he, was, he wrote. Just, he was saying stuff like that earlier. I think that was just Ulkiora, like, he was attempting some kind of hostage mind game thing but nobody knew what he was going for or <laughs> you know, or you ever tried to just bluff your way into <laughs> i have given them a disease that only i have the antidote for <laughs> or this is a remnant of when orihime would have mattered and her and aizen wanted her power for actual usage in some way and not just a trap to get some captains 
to Waco I, Mundo. I don't want to bum people out. You know, I am all about exploring unexplored territory. I, I, you know, I, when I set out on this journey, I was very optimistic. Uh, this last episode and possibly the last two or three, let's say the last uh, uh, seven episodes of Chugging Bleach. Uh-huh. I have over the course of them completely lost all respect for Kubo's shonen writing. Yeah, it gets really bad. The man might be a little bit Jinkaria after all. Mm-hmm. I think I am pretty sure that a bigger part of it is his. E- he just has a bad. He had a bad editor. He had a bad editor. Like there's a part in this where it's like I can you can see behind the veil the editor going move ahead. See, that's the thing. I don't know which one's more to blame, right? Because there is definitely you see the conflict of an editor, but you don't know who's on what side. <laughs> Well, you see, um, when Bakuman, the manga about making manga, um, I'm pretty sure there's a character in that analogous to Kubo, and their trait is they do whatever the editor tells them to do, <laughs> unquestioningly. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. So, I don't know how much stock you want to put in that, but that's uh, yeah. sure a thing. Mm-hmm. I, I remember this era hearing, you know, early internet unconfirmed reports that Kubo was starting to realize that he was locked into the Shonen Jump machine and wasn't going to be allowed to end this series, so he just stopped giving a shit and did whatever they told him. That sure feels like kind of like what happened, considering that, uh, spoilers, the series ends with that his doctor telling him, end it or die. Like, you will, your health is bad enough from doing this that you will die. Shout out to uh, the author of My Hero Academia, whose author comments every week is some variant of, my, sh- my arm is falling off. <sighs> Hmm. Yeah, this industry sure is rough. Great. Yeah, the old Kiora stuff uh, with the implications at the beginning of the conversation certainly was weird. The actual transformations and designs and fight is like the best stuff out of these 26 episodes or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, like that is the best animation we got this whole set for sure. Oh, yeah, it looked so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Also, a thing that doesn't that didn't happen, that they just say happened, but didn't everything between Olkiora and Orihime. Like, <laughs> yeah. that whole thing where Ichigo is like, I can read your moves because you became more human. And I'm like, he was just a misogynist. Is that what we're, like, category? <laughs> like, he, he went from being, like, a an inhuman being with no context or human relationships to just being an incel, and I guess that makes it more human? That was, a, that was character growth there. Becoming an incel. Uh, a number of characters have that character growth this set of episodes. <laughs> oh no. Which culminates in the absolute most memed on thing in all of Bleach, which the anime does not bring across how memed it was because it was mean. And that being this the heart. <laughs> yes, the heart. Mmm. <laughs> Man, that, that's one page done. <laughs> In the manga, there is just a solid white page with the heart in the center. That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> People may have are still making fun of that. Holy <laughs> shit. Cash the check, Kubo. <laughs> Sometimes you got a page count to fill, yeah. This is also the point in the manga where backgrounds basically disappeared, I think. Mm. Oh, wow. We're already there. Where it's just like, yeah, there's no more backgrounds. That That's too hard. I'm dying. And... This happened to other jump manga, like this happened to Naruto, not with the backgrounds disappearing, but um, there got to a point in Naruto where everybody started wearing cloaks, <laughs> hmm. so he didn't have to draw them. But yeah, all that hard shit, I, I really thought coming back to this, surely that this will make more sense, I'm remembering it incorrectly, the entire Ulkior <laughs> or Ahime thing would not just come off as <laughs> as the manga, te- the story telling me something happened that didn't. Yeah, that was it was it was jarring. It is weird. Also, something that really bugged me is it feels like it's a repeat of the the fight with um, Yakia. Yakia, yeah. Where it's just yeah, it even it even has the same thing where he goes super hollow mode to win and is like I didn't want to win that way. Oh, like it's exactly the same. Yeah, it's really strange that we just had that same th- set of stuff happen again. Like, well, the entire all of Waco Mundo is just soul side. I know it's just 
It doesn't. God. It doesn't have to culminate that way. Well, it it it, do, it does when you have to work ninety five hours a week to get this chapter out. <laughs> you don't have time to think of new things. Um, something that happened right before the Yulkari or Ichigo fight though was, or you fighting uh, Yami. Yes. Yami. Yes, and uh, and almost all of that was added for the anime and the manga. He just blows up the floor with the bombs. Oh. oh hmm. Excuse me. Are you telling me? Like nothing after that moment featuring Yami exists in the manga. No, I mean n none of none of Ashita fighting him, like him okay. shooting him with arrows Just... and hitting him with a sailor shutter. None of those things actually happen. Yeah, needed to be crystal clear on that. Okay, it just it Thank it God. literally is just it literally is just like Ashita shows up and he's like, I have these mines I got from Mayuri and blows up the the floor and Yami falls and then that's it. You know, which I, I actually like that stuff was uh, bringing Yomi back and being like, yeah, his main personality trait is uh, being a misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the two mean girls show back up and uh and and one of them, the black haired one gets really rapey with Orihime. And, and then uh, and then much like much like the time Bob said that the first time they, she dies. Wait, no, she actually doesn't. She doesn't. The, the, they reveal that in a post credits thing. Yes. But, um I, I love that whole scene with her fighting Yami, not just because it's really well animated, but because Orihime keeps trying to Disney princess reach her and she keeps going, shut up, bitch. I still hate you. <laughs> She's very consistent. It's important in a, in a uh, villain. <laughs> She's like dying, like she's getting tossed out a window, like my worldview hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should also talk about Rukia versus Rudeborn a little bit because that was happening <sighs> concurrently to uh Ugh. Okay, so another thing. Ringy and Chad interfering in this fight at all, another anime thing. Huh. Oh in my god. In the manga, god. only Rukia fought him. It is really what? funny that, that how proud Rudeborn is of his terrible power that he is a jobber <laughs> that summons other jobbers. Yeah, I know. He's literally he's a like seventh a seventh gen, gen boss. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Literally. Oh my god, it's so terrible that Renji and Chad being in this fight is added for the anime because this is the worst it's ever been. I have I have one spoilered image in the channel. Okay. Um, I I cannot I cannot do this with Renji anymore. <laughs> Six putties shut down his bankai. <laughs> yeah, it's sucked. just over. It's so fucking over. I can't stick up for this fucking piece of trash anymore. It sucks. R Ringy, ne Ringy is is the second biggest fraud in all of Bleach. Yeah, man, that's bad. It's so bad. <laughs> the biggest fraud is Hitsugaya. Yeah, I think the big the reason he's the biggest fraud though. Is he's built up is the best there is, and it's like, yeah, I make ice. I make a little bit of ice. He loses <laughs> the only he beats that job, that job or fresh he owned, and I think he loses every single other encounter he's ever in in the entire series. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, a guy who loses every time will continue to lose. No one could have predicted this ever. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to be said about the seventh gen boss fight that was this fractione. It's it's really funny that Ruki is like, wait, he's a plant, and plants are vulnerable to cold, and then just instantly <laughs> freezes. <laughs> like, what were you trying to do before? <laughs> and then Yami shows up and, and kills him. It's like I, I wanted to see Ruki a hostile beast to him, but I guess Yami can just show up and do it. It's fine. That's fine. It, no, it, look, what I've learned this set of episodes. And what I've always known is the shonen anime, so women can never win. I know. It's that, so that is, bad that is this time. Th this is maybe the worst chunk of episodes, and this is maybe like the worst chunk of that era of shonen jump about this. Like, I don't remember any other jump series of the era, or even since, or even maybe before, where it's just like, no, we gotta, we gotta literally knock the women out of this fight as fast as possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's just... It's upsetting. It is really, really upsetting. I haven't been the, this upset at Bleach about this specific thing in quite a while, and never this many times in a single episode of Chuggy Like, Bleach. normally mm -hmm. it's just like, ha-ha, Rukia will lose because she is the girl and doesn't have a Bankai. In this, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, this wasn't like you didn't have a lack of credible female combatants. You had a fucking buffet, and you threw it away. Well, we had to get to the shit that we couldn't let them complete their fights normally because we had to have give fucking Ikaku and fucking 
Izuru and fucking Shuhei their own fights and fucking uh what is his stupid fucking name? Yumichika. Yeah, we Yuma had to Chief. all give them all fights against characters. So we couldn't we couldn't spend time on the actual fucking people people wanted to see fight. We 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 have to fucking glance past that. Did you know pacing gets really bad when there's 45 motherfuckers that have to be chewed through? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I stopped reading this manga several volumes back. <laughs> Other shit happening concurrently with Ulkiora fighting Ichigo is Rinji, like, uh, Runuganga 2 shows up and Rinji and Chad kill him. This is also a fucking anime-only thing for the record. Yeah, it felt like it. But but they, you know, they set this up. They established Runuganga survived and got away in the anime. <laughs> so the, the, <laughs> That's not even Runuganga. That's a different guy. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks a lot. Ulkiora's Super Saiyan form is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those, yeah. those transformations in that Ulkiora fight are real cool. He's definitely only four. Yeah. <laughs> a absolutely. The power scaling of all the Espada four and below totally aren't totally fucked and completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it, part of me wants to give them, like, the rope that would be they didn't know about this transformation. That's why he's rank four. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel like that. They don't. It doesn't feel like that's fully explained and actually nailed down. So it does just feel like he's way more powerful than anyone else. Yeah, I, I was it, getting yeah. the idea that Eisen like explained that this is how we're going to do the numbering system, and then went to each individual Espada and was like, except for you. You're special. It feels that way with some of these. <laughs> there is that thing um, that they go into in a little bit where each Espada is actually represents an aspect of death. Uh, and that's that was... the explanation for that's the explanation for why um, when Grimjow lost his arm, the guy who replaced him all just became seven because they have the or a six because they have the same mm. aspect. That God. was an ass, Paul. Yeah, that was that was the biggest reach in this whole, like maybe in all of Bleach. <laughs> what is her theme then? Uh, she's a cantankerous bitch. What does that have to do with death? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I need to. Uh, let me find a list. I think I can. I think I think there's a list of what their aspects are. Yeah, he listed them, and it was yeah. like not all of them, but like almost all of them mm -hmm. in one go. And it was like, dude, this is a reach. Right. And then with it, where they were changing out members like that, it was like, I don't believe you at all. <laughs> okay. So uh, Yami. Yami is rage. Aaron Yero, uh, the octopus guy, was greed. Saea Poro is madness. Uh, uh, Zomari, eyeball guy, is hedonism. What, greed's of an aspect of death? Well, the, well, there's supposed to be things that lead people to death. Sure. Mm. It could it could be anything. It could be literally anything. Is why. Yeah. yeah it's uh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Man. This is <laughs> Aaron Yero was the theme of a sidewalk. You could die on one of those. <laughs> right. Grim Jow is destruction. D sure. <laughs> Noitora is despair. <laughs> what happened to him? Despair. <laughs> No, no, disrepair. Faulty stairs. <laughs> Ulkiora is nihilism. What are you <laughs> doing? Okay. Harabelle is sacrifice. She said they had her say sacrifice a few times, and then they, they were like, it's, in that episode, it's good enough. They're like, oh, we're covered. We're good. Yeah. Baragon is like age. The, the, the Bleach Wiki says uh, senescence. Yeah, senescence. I don't know what that word means. Senescence. It just, yeah, it I just don't means, know what that word means old to grow old. Aging. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and Stark is solitude. And that is, it's all bullshit. Of yeah, 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 no, yeah. those don't even remotely form a cohesive narrative, even as words unto themselves. Even mm -hmm. if you didn't like need them to fit in the hole that is death related things. If you just said all of those words, someone would be like, Yep, can't find one fucking common thread. Yeah, those are the ten words he said. <laughs> So uh, Ichigo and Ulkiora fight, and Ulkiora turns Super Saiyan and fucking beats the ever-loving shit out of Ichigo, just works him. It's like he doesn't even have a fucking shot. Yeah, he kicks him out of the, the entire, like, what is this place called? 
uh, Las Noches, he punctures a hole through the top of Las Noches to reach the actual Hueco Mundo night sky and starts beating his ass on the roof up there. Man, I sure am glad I read through Black Clover before I saw this fight. Yeah, Black Clover sure is a lot better than Bleach. Oof. Sorry, people who like Bleach. I, the comment section is going to be real interesting this time. So, like, I'm sorry, it's fucking true. Uh, something that, that has hurt to realize is that being someone who watched Bleach and Naruto as they aired, to then go back and watch through One Piece and be like, oh... You were the, obviously the best of the three. That's, yeah. That hurts a little bit. Oh, I'm livid. Yeah. I am <laughs> fucking livid. I have been livid and boiling with a more increasing amount of rage since I watched the live action adaptation of One Piece. I, <laughs> I need, hmm, I need to see like when this was in turn. I, I need to know like when One Piece was at this point. This oh, where it so was. This, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where it was, uh, so this was around August 2009. I need to know if One Piece was in the greatest arc in Shonen history at that time. I believe when I looked it up before, they were in the middle of the the rescue arc they did for for Ace. I think. It was, yes. So we were a little... Oh, God. So this was after the greatest arc in Shonen anime history. Oh, God. <laughs> That really sucks for them. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So Ichigo turns into like a super advanced hollow version of his hollow self where he has like devil horns and uh, is berserk and fucking and annihilates Olkiora. Like it's kind of flips to being one sided when that happens. Mm hmm. But he's also in berserker mode and seriously injures Ishida who comes up to help and he gets worked by Okiora first and then gets worked by Hollow Ichigo. L. <laughs> and then we get the heart speech when I'm like, Okiora, like this, there was nothing here. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you do this shit with Grimjow? Grimjow had so much more of a fucking, like, actually sort of got pulled towards to being less of a dick by Orime mm. than Okiora did. It's it's so nothing like this in the Orihime is one of us now shit is just nothing. It's literally zero. Yeah, it did seem like a completely unearned conclusion, like a period that didn't belong at the end of the sentence. Right. It's an idea and a good one if they had developed it. Right. Yeah, it could have been something, but it just wasn't. And I, it came off more like I think you're saying earlier, it was them bluffing. Like he, he, he is just like it just comes off like him being insane, right? And this is getting a little teen, teeny bit ahead, but like the Ichigo inner hollow shit is also like starting to fall flat because it's like we've met all these Espada, we've gotten flashbacks by the end of this set of episodes for all of them. They have very human motivations and personalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is, like, Ichigo's becoming this other thing that is also like a human? But his is really crazy. <laughs> yeah, his is really crazy for some reason. Hollow Ichigo in his mind isn't crazy, but this... <laughs> because Ichigo's... Look, the, the, this transformation, especially when the mask breaks and he, he reveals that it's a glorious mullet, really <laughs> pinpointed why I, I've never honestly liked... Ichigo and Orihime individually and especially as a couple because they feel like and you know what I'm from here I get to say it they feel like a trailer trash couple that gets together in high school and Ichigo <laughs> is a monster chugging Kyle who punches holes in drywall when she has that screaming breakdown about how this is all her fault she shouldn't have made him mad or asked him for help I don't like their vibe it creeps me out it's not great in this one. I feel like in other places it's fine. Anytime they try and do serious stuff with Orihime, it doesn't work. It's like Yeah, no, it does not work at all. She needs to she needs to be like the goofy girl who's desperate. Right? Like that's that's when Orihime is a good character when she's eating a whole loaf of bread in one bite. And uh back down it it, it Chad and Yami reveals that he's the fucking zeroth Espada. This is the other big, biggest thing where everybody I know is like, fuck this, fuck Kubo, fuck this series. We the the legendary line of 
whoever said the Espada went from one to ten. You? I really thought this was a joke. <laughs> I thought this was a great <laughs> bit and they were about to wash this guy. <laughs> like, cause, cause they, they set it up. Ichigo, when he's coming down, he's coming down like he's flying down the stem of Korin's tower. They do the shot where Goku saves Gohan from Nappa. I'm like, okay, he's going to turn around and he's going to one shot this dumbass, Yeah. And we're going to move on. Right. Yeah. yeah that would have been great. And instead, instead, no, he's, he's, his, he's so dangerous. His power to get big Hmm. Have we had any conversations about what about inherent traits? I, I'm now thinking about it. I think like the entire reason I have that association in my head is because of Bleach. <laughs> oh my god! Because Bleach has so many guys that do that. Uh huh. And they're all enormous fucking jobbers. Even Komamura's Bonkai is making a big giant, and he's a jobber. Hey, hey, he he does well this time though. Does he? Yeah, he technically wins his fight. If you have to be saved by Shuhei, did you really win? I mean, yes. <laughs> we can say those women won their fights too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, but look, look, before we talk too more, more about Yami getting big, we need to return. We, we, we went to the Espada fights for like 18 episodes. Uh-huh. First up was uh, Soy Fawn versus Soy Fawn and fucking Omida versus fucking Omida. Baragon. Yeah. Baragon's pretty cool. He should have been number one, frankly. He does feel way more like a number one than what they reveal. Stark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, also, he should have actually gotten to be cool and have a cool fight, which he does not get to have. He's got the best fight out of this set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking loved it. So there's this unbelievably stupid fu fucking fucking Omida. He's like, Captain, we we have to, uh, we gotta turn on that Gintai Kaijo shit. I'm too fucking stupid to know when eighty percent of my power is here. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like, what are you doing? All okay. right, it's like, what the fuck? Uh, they they ward off fucking Baragon for a little bit. He has the power to age thing. He age things he touches i uh, can i can i can i uh can i talk about because he does the transformation right yes uh i i, I just want to talk about i i did there there has not been a larger disappointment i believe from me in this entire set of episodes than that guy became the cool skeleton king that i saw in the intro i was like oh <laughs> fucking really i was hoping that was an important character they're like oh he will be and i'm like he shouldn't though <laughs> They developed this whole lore that's kind of what I thought he would be, but I didn't want him to just be one of these guys. Right? Damn, I wanted there's, a unique... There's, there's, they're all of these guys right I know. now. It just... It's rough. You thought they I would introduce, like, some new force? I know. I just want the one unique character with an interesting role that isn't the 11th dude in a Dynasty Warriors battle I need to take down before fighting the enemy general. <laughs> Well, sorry, that's what this fucking series is. I want the... We haven't gotten to it, but fuck it, I'm saying it now anyways. I want the cool skeleton king from Hueco Mundo to have a lore more interesting and then... More interesting than... And then Aizen wandered in and said, Hey, join me. And he said, okay. Yeah, him being a cock. Yeah, yeah, he just gets Im immediately defeated because Aizen's just always been the most powerful creature there is in this universe. So this is way too fucking far off for them to be related, possibly. Frighteningly, I certainly hope they're unrelated. But it's really funny that, that, that he, this makes him pretty much identical to the old man Bount. You're right. Because his entire thing was that he was, he was the leader of the Bounce until Jinkari showed up. Hey, Agro, you looking forward to it? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Shit, honestly, I wish I was there right now. This is uh, so it's he 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 releases and turns into the big skeleton king uh, after playing grab ass a little bit with Soifon and Omida. Uh, he immediately like rots Soifon's arm off, which is fucking crazy. 
like he infects her with you age and die and Omida has to slice her arm off. Hey, I you, forget if she doesn't have it for the rest I of just, the series. I just want to point something out real quick. Uh, doing permanent damage, severe damage to a character is really cool in your shonen thing. I appreciate stakes and meaning and impact on characters. Hey, can we can we can we do that to someone without a vagina? No, that's even still a trope. Even one character like, my hero with has a, a penis. Just one. Yeah. No. Because it happened several times throughout this. Where they're just like, oh, she just got speared from behind and is fucking on the ground and bleeding out this fucking, uh, oh, what are they called? The visards. Mm -hmm. Right? They're just like, oh, shit, she got fucked up. Oh, my God, this looks dire. And I'm like, yeah, of course. She didn't have a penis. She didn't bring a penis into battle to protect her. Oh, it's so annoying. This set of episodes, so annoying about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it really, really sucked to see them do this to Swarfon. But I thought I, I thought it was neat to have some permanent damage happen to a character, and I thought their hand melting off was cool. Mm -hmm. And Swarfon kind of sucks to begin with, which is <laughs> a problem. I would like to say Swarfon should be better. It, but unfortunately, <sighs> she's in charge of the stealth force. Yeah, it's like she has an incredibly overpowered power, and she some, for some reason can never do Use it. Use it. Yeah. yeah, she should never lose a fucking fight with that Shikai. Yeah, and, she, and it seems to come from she won't use any of her abilities. I don't get it. They keep well, introducing like, well, oh, she, she can do Shunpo. She can't use her Shikai on this guy. Yeah, it's impossible. The whole thing is that it fucking rots you. <sighs> I think Soifan's Bankai is very cool. The giant nuclear bomb. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I is also cool. like it, it. She also is the first character who has even remotely a real reason to not immediately break it out. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, but they all have the bomb. same tone with why they don't break it out of just like, I don't like oh, it. I don't like it. I don't like that. It kills good. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so tired of fucking hearing this. Yeah, but the difference between her and Ikaku is she does break it out as soon as she's like, oh, I need it. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, she actually does it, and it's mostly it's not good for assassinating people. It's a little too loud. <laughs> uh, but that that it that she does break it out, and that they can't have her win. Man, we get like a whole episode of fucking Omaida doing shtick, dodging this dude to delay him, so Soifon can. Shoot How the heck did gun. does Omaida get able to dodge him? And she he got he got Soifon's arm in one, one hand. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. It's, he's he's yeah, just like, oh, well, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just have fun for a little bit. You know, I didn't deeply hate Mareccio or whatever, uh -huh. you know, this dude, until, like, the last set. Yeah. That's canon. He sucks. Like, he that's, should, there's, there's no reason they should have been pretending this dude's a real character. Yeah, this guy, if, if people don't remember, one shot by Ichigo. That was his only other role in this. Yeah, well, Ichigo just punched him. He punched he through his He wasn't his even Shikai. in Bankai yet. Yeah. <laughs> God, he sucks so bad. Where's fucking the blonde lieutenant? Not Kira, the one with the sunglasses. Is he even fucking here? I don't think he is, no. No, he's in the outro, but I don't think he's here. Thank God. We don't need any more lieutenants. I know, but I'm just wondering, like, where where, where all are all these motherfuckers? They're busy. Like, Iba is, Iba is there healing everybody who got gored by uh, the behemoth. Mm-hmm. But like, where where is this dude? Shouldn't there shouldn't it be all fucking hands on deck? And this is getting ahead a little bit again. But like, why is shouldn't Yamamoto's lieutenant like be pretty strong theoretically? Like he's the lieutenant of the big guy. He's one of the oldest Soul Reapers. Why is he outside the entire fight doing yeah, nothing? Yamamoto isn't even he doesn't do a single thing in this whole set. That bugs me so yeah, fucking I don't, bad. Do we even see one He's frame just, of him during all this? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they just do not fucking show him at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he took a nap after. It's genuinely fucking infuriating. Like, why is he not? Why is he letting all his guys get killed? Like, it for, while the fire is there, you can think maybe theoretically, okay, he's using his powers to seal Tos and Gein and Aizen. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, you guys kill the Espada, and then we can all jump them. I mean, honestly, at this point, this is just how the 13 court guard squads get down. <laughs> Stupidly, the, and getting yeah, everyone no, killed. They're, they're insane. Like, this is not a military force. This is a <laughs> weird martial organization filled with insane people, with no tactical training, with no larger strategic goals, who just have, like, honor duels based on whatever the fuck they feel like. So we're really operating on the level of the Anchorman fight scenes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, so who's pulling the pin on the grenade, just holding it and screaming? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's pretty bad out here. <laughs> so he shoots her with her Bonkai. I mean, she shoots him with his Bonkai, but it, it doesn't work. The episode where it's revealed this doesn't work and a bunch of other shit happens is called, like, the the revival of the Espada, and it's supposed to be framed like everybody owned the Espada, but then the dust clears and they're still there. But that didn't happen for anybody but this one, so the title of that episode is really stupid. I guess the Espada in this case is singular. I mean, uh, we, we are meant to believe Holly Bell was dead in that ice. Which is sure. so dumb. Fucking sure. God, I hate the Holly Bell fights. The visors show up at this point, so which means we have to move on to the next fight before, so we can talk about all the points before. <laughs> yes. Real quick, I I want to talk about the Holly Bell thing and why it bugs me. They had no ideas. That's why I hate the Holly they Bell didn't. fight. It yeah. is constantly, what if I froze her? What if I froze her? What if I froze her? It, it, what if I froze her? And I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Her health bar isn't going down, dude. Right. And, and her, her constant thing is, what if I dropped water? What if I dropped water? What if I dropped water? Yeah. And, and then they forget to even have his time limit on Bonkai until like the last episode of the fight. And it's like, yeah, but those, mm -hmm. those roses are supposed to be floating behind you at all times. And they just weren't. Well, it, I'm not going to give him shit for that because the number one rule of all shonen anime is if a character's power has a time limit, that will no longer exist after the first time they use it. <laughs> <laughs> Even One Piece starts doing that. Cool. Bet it earns it. Ukitake and Kyoraku versus Stark. Ukitake playing with Lynette like a child is is very funny. Mm -hmm. Stark sucks. Stark sucks. Everything about Stark sucks. I don't think a single thing about Stark is cool. Kubo is trying so fucking hard to make this dude cool, and he sucks. Yeah, he even pairs him up with uh, Kyoraku. And tries to make him out to be like their Kyoraku. And it's like, he isn't, though. I kind of think... I don't know. I don't hate Stark as much as you guys. I think there's an important addition made to a team when it's... This is the guy who was so lonely. He somehow spawned off a little girl from his soul that he takes care of. <laughs> <laughs> like, that has so many red flags that it makes him an interesting addition to the cast. If he wasn't number one... Mm -hmm. Oh he yeah, I agree. It, he would. I would give him a little mm. more rope. Yeah. Also, if he attacked like Noel Vermillion, <laughs> that would help. Like the and, and he doesn't like Baragon has a neat power. Haribel has a couple neat things. His shooting the Saros is bland, boring, uninteresting, not dynamic, well, uninteresting. Yeah. Like I like the when he does the barrage of them. That's cool. But that should have been, like, where he started after he did his resurrection. Like, there shouldn't have been the just shooting singular ones phase. It should have been, like, I'm number one. Here's a fucking wall of Saros. I don't need any fancy tricks. Here's this fucking wall of death. <laughs> but, yeah, he's totally more powerful than Uclioro, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And I Los Lobos is... is Lo Los Lobos is lame. It's just the fucking kamikaze ghost shit from Dragon Ball, but not interesting. <laughs> Yeah, like, like right at the beginning, like, oh, this is really cool. And then you see how it works. Like, oh, that's, huh, man, I, I really, like, bro, you've got one thing in this universe you care about. Maybe don't turn it into a ghost wolf that kamikazes on your enemies. Yeah, I think visually it's really, like, the idea of this army of ghost wolves. The vi that's really the visual cool. visual is cool, and then it goes nowhere. Mm -hmm, oh, then. bleach. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wish I had known. Uh, oh well. Let let's move on to Hitsugaya versus Harabell, cause because that's when the uh that's when the the, the visor show up. How many episodes of this fight is you fool? You have water, I have ice. You fool, you have ice, all of I them. have water. All of them. <laughs> all of them. They're they both play so a bunch dumb. of they play a bunch of grab ass. Hits a guy is really smug for somebody who gets ruined every fucking time he does anything. What does popularity poll say? He's the strongest in the, in the whole society. <laughs> One of, uh, a thing I think is funny is that in some of the rubble, they show like debris and items. And I'm like, Mayuri recreated every single object inside Karakura Town. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, I, he's deranged. We've been over that. Yeah, <laughs> he's creepy. Harabel Saro is cool. It's like a big sheet. Oh, yeah, I yeah. When she neat. uses the slice from her, um, from her sword. 
spear yeah, to thing? Do the Sarah, to do the Sarah, and it's like a big sheet of light. That's cool. Her water jets are... Man, like, remember when the great Dordoni was like a jobber because his thing was just wind? <laughs> And now we have all. And now we have this one who's number three, and her shit is why of water. And it doesn't. She doesn't seem to do anything with it. Like it's always just a tidal wave. Like I kept expecting. Oh well, there'll be like water drills or something with water. No, I'm just gonna drop the water on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's it's like Kubo was really running on empty in terms of ideas. Yeah, she she really is just a placeholder in this larger conflict. You're like, they point the camera at her and go, this is Holly Bell, she's really strong. Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> if you say so, Chief, I'll... She's fighting uh, <laughs> Itagaya, so I can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really folded that chair. Good job. <laughs> Inside... I guess all the Soul Reapers get put on the ropes fucking somehow. Right. And the and the visors show up. Hachigan shows up to help Soifan and Omida. And I actually like this one a lot because I think it's a really good, cool matchup of the, the mage barrier guy versus the god of death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's real sweet. I, I really wish magic got more play in Bleach. They introduce, like, the keto core and then never do anything with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, this is, this is the guy... This is all we really got for that, but it, it, at least we get this except one fight. The guy, except, except Urahara's assist. Where the fuck is that dude? Where the fuck is Tetsu? Well, Urahara and his team aren't here yet. I'm sure they're coming. <laughs> so he shows up and, and helps them fight. His first plan is that he puts a big box around Baragon that for Soifan to shoot her Bonkai in with the explanation of, the explosion has nowhere to go now, but into you. Should have worked. Should have worked. It, it should have worked. It, it works a little bit. It hurts him pretty good. Yeah. It was real cool. Yeah. It's I love really, that missile. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that immensely. That was so cool. I think the over explanation, I, I think Hachigan teleporting his own rotting arm into this dude's stomach and killing him with his own power is interesting. Mm -hmm. I just think it's kind of anticlimactic. A little bit, but I, I do like it, though. I do like it. I feel like it should have helped if it, it, there should have been like this trap card moment where he's like, about to kill all three of them, and then he's like, "Oh, I did this," and he's like, "Oh, fuck! Now I'm now I'm fucked." There's there's also a really funny element that Hachigan gets Soifan to agree to his plan by promising to seal Urahara in a barrier for a month. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. The look on her face is worth this whole set of episodes. I I really enjoy the when she shoots the rocket, she has herself like wrapped in some sort of seal wrap to like hold herself down. Mm hmm. Yeah, she has like the steel stomach band on. Sadly, this is the most satisfying of the three conclusions of the Espada uh -huh. in this set of episodes. That, that's oh. something. Well, they gotta fall. <laughs> Rose and Love show up to help Ukitake and Kyoraku. Who kind of just got owned, like, completely, yeah, like, which was yeah. weird. Yeah, kind of yeah, completely. Um, Ukitake's power did, was really cool, and then we just... He just, got, he just stopped. Yeah, he just stopped. Whoops, Wonderwise. Man, I sure, I sure fucking hope when, um, when we see Kyoraku's Bonkai, it justifies that's not a thing you should use where other people are. I don't actually remember what it is. Yeah, neither do I. Also, I'm just gonna say this now because it doesn't fucking matter. Um, Mashiro, the the common rider girl, and Kensei fight Wonder Weiss. Who fucking cares? Who gives a shit? <laughs> I mean, fuck Wonder Weiss. Fuck him. I. <sighs> I thought Wonder Weiss was going to mean a lot more than yeah, that he I did. Yeah, I thought there was a plan. I thought there was a plan. Right. I thought there well, was a plan. There's 26 more episodes of this, Dan. Oh, I thought there was a plan. There to be a plan. I thought there was a <laughs> fucking plan for Wonder Weiss. They really play. They acted like there was a plan for Wonder Weiss. Uh, also, the Mashiro, like, kicking stuff and it just exploding extremely is great. The eyeball thing? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that was really good. But it's they, unfortunate that it happened to the exact thing that they were like, oh, we have to explain that I in the portal to Hueco Mundo <laughs> that happened over a hundred episodes ago. And I'm like, oh, shit, they're going to explain what that was. We're going to get interesting lore. No, wouldn't it be cool if I kicked it and it exploded? And I'm like, okay, either Kubo's an idiot or his editor's a war criminal. <laughs> There's... My God! There's also when the visors show up, they also have them kill a bunch of minnows, which I'm sure is anime only. 
to show I how hope. big and strong they are. And I'm like, who fucking cares, man? Yeah, that 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 was she just had yeah. nothing. It's like if they showed up to a battle in Dragon Ball Z and they're like, before we do this battle, we need to I do have a, to kill some Cybermen. We we need to do some squats. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, we're all fucking impressed, bro. Oh wow, so many squats. Anyways, that's perfect, Zell. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> L- loves Shikai is a big cactus club that catches on fire. I get where the Bo 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 rumor came from from this because he is kind of goofy in this fight. Bo 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 rumor? Yeah, there's the, there was this rumor that all the visors were based on other series running and jump at the time. Oh, was based oh. On Bo Bo Bo. it was a fan theory that it seemingly does not have because nobody's ever able to point at who everybody else is. Uh huh. <laughs> It's just like love is bo bo bo. Oh, okay. I think there were a couple others. The 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 big guy has uh, one piece vibes. Hmm. I I I think like we went over this back when we were doing those episodes. Oh, because he has like he has like a he has like a um like a Jolly Roger on his fucking head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I guess I see that. But they they were all pretty big reaches from my memory. Yeah. Rose is just a Belmont. Like he's he's yeah. Alec- he's Alucard <laughs> with the with great. the vampire killer. Mm-hmm. Uh, did I put did I put in that a very important image? I don't think I did. Did I even take it a screenshot of it? I certainly hope I did. I did. Uh, there's this there's the shot where they look really bad, like AI art bad. Like they have AI art faces. <laughs> mm. Yeah, consistency isn't exactly a thing in Bleach too often. <laughs> Uh, there's also a thing um, in the w- when Stark is fighting Captain Kyoraku, this is the first spoiler image I put in there, uh, where he like floats under him and shoots a Sarah up, and that's a thing Muramasa does in the filler to Ichigo. Oh my god, so th- the filler <laughs> continues just to be like, I could take what's on the test. <laughs> yep. Yep. <sighs> yep. And uh, I'm gonna be real, I forgot how the how this, this fight with Stark ended, because in my head, it ended when Kyoraku comes out of his shadow and stabs him. Yep. Uh, then they then they play around a little bit more with how dumb Kyoraku's power is. God. Every time that he has to write something that's JoJo's ask, he just fails completely like this. <laughs> yes, he does. God, he's really bad. Like, yeah, the the whole thing is a little weird, but the fact that Kyoraku has like this chapter black ask you're in my domain power is fucking bizarre and horrifying. <laughs> I honestly don't like. I honestly would not be surprised if somebody was like, "Yeah, that 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 whole segment after he gets stabbed from behind is in the anime only." I don't think it is, for the record. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the manga. I remember vaguely reading that. I remember people being so fucking pissed. Like, it's like, what? What do you mean the number one goes down without either of like the two captains? We don't know their bankai doing their bankai. That's what pisses everybody off about this at the time. It's like. Nobody uses their Bonkais in these fights. We have all these characters where we wanted to see their cool powers, and none of them have cool powers, and none of these captains use their shit. What are they fucking saving it for? Winner? <laughs> 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 like, what, what, like, Ukitake doesn't use his Bonkai. Kyoraku doesn't use his Bonkai. None of the visors use their Bonkai. Even though both both Love and uh, Rose were fucking captains, mm-hmm. they should have fucking Bonkai. At least we got to see their Shikais. That's, I guess that's something. They're Shikais, which are just, the, which don't really have abilities. Like, I, I guess the Rose thing turns, I mean, I guess the club gets on fire and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the whip, um, I think it blew things up that it stabbed. Yeah. Something like it, that. It, it was yes, implied to have a lot that. of interesting multifaceted. Look, look, there's 40 characters and Kubo is running out of gas. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Th- this happens to all, like uh, shonen series. Eventually, where Bleach gets be- Bleach gets cast bloat the worst of any shonen I've ever seen. Yeah, because they just mm-hmm. won't go like, away. It is a dis- it is a disease that every series gets eventually, but Bleach handles it the worst. Mm-hmm. Oh, for the record, that shit Kinsei did with the gauntlets and the thing behind him—that is his bonkai. Oh, is it? Yeah, because his shikai is the is the combat knife. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, it was really cool though. It doesn't like have the grandeur of a Bonkai at all, and it's not sold as one in the show. So I was confused as well. Yeah. Yep. 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 I'm trying. To th- we should cover the flashbacks they do when they um 
When they die. But, when they die. Uh, I, I would love to talk about the Holly Bell one. Can I talk about the Holly Bell one? <laughs> when we get to it. Okay. Baragon's flashback is that he was the strongest hollow in the King of Hueco Mundo, and then Eisen showed up and cocked him. Okay. That, that was his flashback. He's, he's like sitting there on a throne, surrounded by hollows, and then he's like, I'm the king of Hueco Mundo, who are you? And he's like, I want you to join me. And he's like, I'll kill you, and stabs him, and it's like, oh, Aizen wasn't there? Okay, I'll work with you. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Fucking amazing. <laughs> the, like, the story may not have been good, but the world-building implications of, you know, like, we, we, we've got the the whole Soul Reaper squad up here because hollows prey on, on, on pluses, and we have to defend the world of the living from this noxious infusion and the king of Waco Mundo is just some asshole who's like, well, I've got, I've got an army and nothing to do with it. Uh, get drunk. He does say if Eisen hadn't showed up, he'd have had his army split into two and kill each other. <laughs> yeah. Too bad Eisen is like the linchpin of all of this organization. Uh huh. And he's so uninteresting. We're, man, we have your next set, the next set episodes is going to be so fucking good. I'm so excited for Dan's reactions to that shit. I'm going to be screaming. <laughs> it's going to be rough. We get 26 episodes of a, of the plan to to the, to surpass Jin Gar. The plan to eradicate <laughs> Super Saiyans? Is that... Oh, God. Star Stark was lonely, so he, when he, he, he made a little girl that's his... Okay. Yeah, there's there's lots of red flags with <laughs> Stark. Like, and like, Stark all the stuff be. about like, oh, when she turns into the gun, that's still her body, and she talks about her butt, and it's like, oh man, I don't want any of this. Yeah, it's okay. He's just slapping his gun that's a little girl's butt uh -huh. repeatedly. He gets a lot of joy out of this. Ain't nothing weird. Was anybody else reminded of Metal Gear Solid Four with the way that these uh, a spot a die, and then we get their tragic flashback <laughs> right after? <laughs> No, because it was simply too hackish to even remind me of that. That is sad, oh, because I've given the Beauty of the sad. Beast Brigade post-mortem scene so much shit over the years. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't connect that dot because none of them had a connection to anything that felt as authentically a core horror or emotion of the human experience as any of the Beauty and the Beast Brigade. Mm -hmm. Holly Bell could have been that if that was developed or landed well at all, but it's completely hackish. Hiori and uh, Lisa help Hitsugaya with Haribo. We see Lisa's Shikai. It's like a big cavalry crushing spear. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Aizen just gets bored and kills Har Haribo. That's how that fight ends. Yeah, the, uh, th <laughs> that sucks so bad. Mm -hmm. He then says literally all of the Espada combined are not as strong as me. Yeah. It, it, he does it while saying, oh, sacrifices need to be made and all this is like, this doesn't actually make sense with why you're killing them at all. You just are doing it so we can move on. Yeah. It, it felt terrible. It felt horrible. It was literally like the editor told me to wrap this shit up. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we get her flashback where. She's hanging out with the, uh, with her three Frasciones as hollows, and they have some rivalry with a different shark guy, and he gets Aaron Carr powers and owns the shit out of her, and is about and beats up her. You know, the honestly, the parts that you're emphasizing Eisen shows up and takes pity on her. It's it sucks. The parts you're emphasizing aren't even the dumbest parts because the dumbest parts is like she she makes a third friend that's an animal. There's not even, like, a deep relationship implied about the first two. Then she wanders into the weird dudes who get day drunk and jack off King of Hueco Mondo lair. And some shark guy's like, I'm your bully and arch nemesis now. She leaves. They fight. It's so tragic. And then Aizen, I guess, what was it? Three minutes before that meeting with the king or three minutes after just shows up and is like, I'm going to save you from this because you're going to be my powerful iron car. It is horrible. Yeah, it's, it's real hackish. The only <gasps> thing I, I, I enjoyed seeing more interaction between those three and Haribel back at their home base. That was a scene that lasted maybe a minute. Yeah, it's small. But that was good. I don't even know if it was a minute. <laughs> I feel like it was like 40 seconds at most. Yeah, if they had interesting ideas for how to develop this Hueco Mundo thing that didn't just involve Eisen, uh -huh. that would be 
be helpful? And if it didn't all need to happen in the same half hour or something for some reason, <laughs> that would be helpful. I hated yeah. it. I hate it. Oh. Oh. And the, it's the part where she, you know, one of the established things from the very beginning is she doesn't want to fight those who fight her. Mm -hmm. She's above that because she's so caring. And I'm like, uh, of course she is, Kubo. She's a woman. Right. You got hey, something did you to notice that she had the did you notice that she had the same number as Nelliel, who also had that weird thing of not wanting to fight people? Oh my god, they had the same aspect of death. I hate this. I hate this so much. I don't want any more women characters in Bleach. That's how bad this is. You gotta keep them anyway, safe. Co Comavera versus Tosin. Shuhei gets involved with this. I don't remember what happens, but I'm willing to bet that Izuru doesn't get to be involved with fucking Geeky. <laughs> <laughs> the power scale might be a little different there. They're both lieutenants. Yeah, but Geen is a little bit better than um, Tosin? what Tosin does, where he's just like, I'm a bug now. Are you afraid of me? Yeah, <laughs> honestly, like, to this is L Tosin turning into fucking Beelzebub is literally one of those things like, you turned into a form that seems less powerful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just seems worse in every way. It, like, and honestly, at that point, I because the fact that Aizen is is fucking crazy has become apparent. <laughs> uh, when when Tosin turned into a bug, I realized, oh my god, Aizen is leaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and these two are going with him. <laughs> Yeah, and then he doesn't even have any remnants of his, his old Bonkai, which seems like it'd be really helpful. Well, he had, like, darkness energy that he, that did something, I guess. I guess. <laughs> turned him into a bug. Yeah, it turned him into a bug and let him see. And then, Yeah, that sucks so bad. God, his backstory is the worst. This is... When I said I had to reread the manga several times, so I was like, there's no way that's right. Uh -huh. It's his backstory. What's, what, what's, what's your backstory? I liked a girl and she died because of domestic violence, so I decided to blow up the government. <laughs> okay, let's slow down there, buddy, because none of that connected. <laughs> Shouldn't this be some that, that guy? Does that guy even exist? Did you write that guy? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, are, are you that guy? Did you actually kill her even? No. Well, shit. Yeah, I kept thinking maybe it was that or maybe anything. Anything that made any level of this sense. This is literally a half-told story. Mm-hmm. This is a story that does not have all the pieces to tell a story. Yeah, it's just the broad outline that just shipped out. Like, yeah. And it that's keeps his happening. Flashback. It keeps happening. I waited for years to see how this whole Tosin thing turned out. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. This is... The worst. Like, we talk about how bad the other things were. This is the worst. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, while we were watching it, we even paused it so I could do that rant about this one. Mm -hmm. Because I spent a really long time being like, I can't wait to figure out why he joined Aizen. And this mm -hmm. is it. Uh-huh. This is justice somehow, even though there's no implication that it is or there'd be less, the fewer kills like he says it is. Yeah, like this. This is the path with the least blood on it. Somehow, the, somehow. Yeah, the one where I'm going to we're going to go kill everyone in Soul Society. I mean, in in, in his defense, may, maybe the thirteen court guard squads at least need to be taken down. I mean, yes, but it didn't seem like this was a good way of doing it. Even. <laughs> oh. and he also just seemed more upset with Central Forty Six, which are they're all dead now. So you, I yeah, guess you I already did your them. thing. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I don't think, I don't think we get the, the single slightest bit about this guy who, who killed his friend. No. Like, don't, don't you think that like, there should be a, you should follow up on such a, a no. Okay. No. What, what if he <laughs> billions must die? <laughs> what if instead of further, uh, understanding the character, we just had him pop. Just like the fight's over, make him explode into blood. Okay. Uh, so, 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 fun fact: we're never, we're never going to actually cover this. So, so I can just spoil it here. Uh, this comes up in the fucking novel, written by the um the Dararara guy. What? The the Bleach can't fear your own world. Like this girl's husband is a major character in that. 
Mm. What? Hmm? Yep. All right. I guess it's good that someone took up these story scraps and made something out of it. Yep. Christ. Uh, anyway, he he owns. He beats the shit out of Komamura, and then they do the, they do the thing where he was blind, but he he gets vision as a fly, and that makes all his other senses worse. Like he gets hung up on being able to see, so Shuhei is able to sneak up on him and impale him from behind, like in his head. Okay. Although there is this unbelievably fucking funny moment after he is defeated, he has lost his fly form. He's back to being human, and he's having this deep moment with. Komamura and Shuhei, and he explodes into goo. Uh huh. <laughs> well, yeah, he was the like fly. he just bursts, <laughs> I... and it is implied that somehow Eisen did that. <laughs> yeah, he had something implanted in him, I guess, which he's a scanner. <laughs> it makes him feel more like like that's the research and development guys. Like that's Mi- Miuri's thing to have had a bomb <laughs> in him all this time. It was straight up cold blooded that Shuhei stabbed him with a with, with like a regular Zanpakuto and then popped his Shikai inside of his neck. Yeah, that was pretty great. Also, isn't there a thing in Bleach where they need to be a certain level of power to even break their skin? So I guess that either Shuhei's really good or Tosin really I, wasn't. I think we know the answer to that, Bob. <laughs> Have you seen the fly? <laughs> <laughs> And the last thing that happens in these episodes is uh, everybody's going to fight Aizen. For some reason, that doesn't actually happen, though. Everybody does not fight Aizen. Hiori runs forward and gets cut in half by Aizen. What the fuck did she think was going to happen? Yeah, she was a woman in a, in a shonen anime. It's not going to go well. Doesn't Gein get her? Yeah, Gein gets her. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Gein gets her. And then Shinji fights Aizen briefly for one second and reveals his Shikai, which lets him reverse your senses of direction, like visual information, and also which way you turn. And then Aizen figures it out in one nanosecond. Maybe <laughs> yeah. he should Maybe he should have uh, corroborated with the other visors and been like, in the time that he is confused... By my power, everybody can jump and kill him. <laughs> Should we use our Bankais? No. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Another power that's just kind of lame. Mm-hmm. And from a, yeah, it's, it's, like one of the main dudes, like Shinji was the visored. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Sucks. It's you know you know it's really fucking stupid that, that Kubo wants us to think Aizen is so smart, but literally all he did was he 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 lucked he won the superpower lottery. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then went hey look at this to everyone he knew. <laughs> yeah. Like he just ran up and like held something up in their face like the fucking photograph music video. Look at this photograph. Oh now you're hypnotized by me forever. <sighs> <sighs> like Ichigo and the the fourth squad captain whose name I I always forget. Unahana? Unahana. Yeah, Unahana. He's running back to Unahana, and Unahana's like, hey, don't ever look at his sword. <laughs> cool. This is a great way to win a sword fight. Everything's going to go great. So, um, a- a- another thing, which is like, this is giving Kubo way too much fucking credit, I think. But the three of the captains, other than Unohana, the three other captains that realistically would not have seen Aizen's sword... Because the whole thing was he, I gave a demonstration to my power to all the thirteen court guard squads to show what a good, show what a good teammate I am. They're all really fucking stupid. Was Byakuya, Kenpachi, and Mayuri because they all didn't become captains until after he did. Mm-hmm. But I'm not giving Kubo that credit. He didn't plan that. Fuck you. That's people making shit up. Like me, I just made that up. If if that was something he acknowledged, that would have come up, and uh, I feel like they would have been on the force that was fighting Aizen instead of the away team. But whatever. Whatever. Uh, but also, after he gets beaten up, Ichigo screams, does like the, Goku, why aren't you here? But why Why did you think Ichigo would be here? What do you think he would do if he was? Yeah, that's a uh, weird moment. It's... Why does everybody all of a sudden think Ichigo is the guy? I don't... I, I at least was able to read that a little bit as, well, Hiori is dying and then we need Orihime. And she right. would be with he, Ichigo. He had said something to that effect earlier, but but we can't like have a character act like Orihime is cool, so we have to shout for Ichigo. Yep. Yep. Uh, really annoying. Like they do that thing where Byaki is like, 
Mayuri, you said that Ichigo going back would end the battle. Like, why Why does everybody think Ichigo's the fucking guy all of a sudden? I don't. It's like everybody has seen through the veil of reality. It's like, well, Ichigo's the main character. He's going to be the one to defeat Aizen. We better get him here. It's like, you should be going, where the fuck is Kid Pachi? He'll solve this issue. <laughs> Like, Kenpachi was able to detect the dude with all of his senses shut off. I feel like he can mm-hmm. handle hypnosis. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, I've taken control of your senses. Kenpachi flexes and turns his senses off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to confuse you and make you kill everyone. It's like, I can already kill everybody. What are you doing? <laughs> also, Byakuya and Kenpachi stay behind to fight Yami. <sighs> Because he's so they powerful don't even and he's prete- both. They don't even pretend that Yami has a shot. They're just fucking working him from the get. Yeah. Mm. It's like, what, what was the point of being like, I'm actually the strongest Espada? And then just having like, okay, well, he's now instantly removed from play by these two other strong guys. Yeah, it's real sloppy. Yeah, it is. It is. Like, like I was here, like, this is where it all, all the wheels fell off. And, like, all the cool payoffs that people thought we were going to get, it's like, you don't actually get any of them. Power scaling is really important to shonen anime. If you say somebody Mm -hmm. is the guy, when he does shit, he better fucking be the guy. You can't say somebody has a power level of 11 billion, and then they fall down the steps and break their leg. (laughs) That's all the actual shit that happened. There was a filler episode. It It was an episode about a magic lamp. Oh, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah, that was neat. It was like a, I think, 10th anniversary of the manga um, episode, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's like a retread of Soul Society, but it's like all Arabian Nights, and Ichigo is having a dream of it, and other characters won't. Other characters keep fl- like flicking in and out of whether or not they're aware of it or are also in the dream. <laughs> yeah, they all have dumb names, like Oreo. <laughs> Yeah, and Ori Ichigo's May. dream name is Ori just May. Chigo. Yeah, Chigo. Rookie Rookie. Rookie Rookie. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Rookie Rookie, the genie, is pretty good. And she has to talk in the dumb voice. <laughs> which My name's jump- Rookie Rookie. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. I love it. I think it. she's literally wearing like the I Dream of Genie costume. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we also find out what the name of that weird fucking mascot of Byaki is, is called. His name is Ambassador Seaweed. Yes. It's so good. Which was important. Yeah, because he was fighting Ichigo. Is that? <laughs> I think you can pull this mo- that motherfucker in Bleach Brave Souls. Probably. <laughs> he's important. Obviously, he's been in way more episodes than many captains. <laughs> That's it? That, that, was, that, that was... Now we have to run through all the Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's separate. Go for it. Okay. 266. Cone gives delusions about being swooned over by women, making Ishin and Ryuken his flunkies and defeating the villains in the other three end segments, and Ichigo walks off. Okay. 267. Gein has an entirely different voice because his real voice actor couldn't be there here for this for some reason. He talks about Rudeborn's power, and Rinji and Rukia and Chad de- demand more screen time. <laughs> 268, Arn Car Encyclopedia. They talk about Loli and do the oh, she's already dead thing, but then they reveal she's pinned to Las Noches. By one of Ishida's arrows. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. 269, Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers. Ishida explains the tower that he fought Yami and there are no stairs and they show him being like a carpenter and cutting the pillars with like the Sele Schneider and shit. Why is this thing... What does the f- purpose of it serve? Why is it just a, countless l- l- layers and layers of rooms that don't even connect to each other? That just seems incorrect. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Welcome to the Hell Castle, Bob. Yeah, we it, don't it, build not, stairs in the Hell Castle, That's not Bob. even true, because those two mean girls come Do up from stairs. stairs. Yeah. <laughs> those stairs go yeah, down one floor they for forgot. some reason. <laughs> 270, our card encyclopedia. Gin explains Ulkiora. He can go Super Saiyan. Gin isn't allowed to explain. He wants to see Ulkiora's demon form, but Ulkiora reaches out and covers his eyes. 271 continuation we're talking about his special Saro G- Gein still has Ulkiora's hands over his eyes he pulls them off and then Gein shoots out his eyes with lasers it's good stuff 272 Quincy Encyclopedia Ryukin tries to kill Ishin because Ichigo stabbed Ishida he blows up the hospital there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it 273 Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers? Yamamoto says he's counting on Soifon. He doesn't remember Omida's name, but tries to encourage him anyway. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, suck it. 274, Aaron Carr Encyclopedia. Gin explains Harabel. Her sword is Tiburon. She controls water. When she releases, her tits comes out, and she says it so she gets fine if she's fine if she gets wet. Episode 275. The episode preview is Soifon asking Baragon if her his aging powers can make Omida's fat ass lose some weight. <laughs> uh, he promises 40 pounds of weight lost, and Omida screams because he thinks being fat is a point of pride. Uh, also, he's going to be cut in half, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Illustrated guy's Soul Reapers. Iz Izuru is really impressed by Hitsugaya's Bankai, but it made the area freezing cold. Yamamoto's flames have made the inside of the fire prison cozy, and Aizen and Co. have tea. And it shows like a, a zoom in on Yamamoto's face where he goes like, Damn you, Hitsugaya. <laughs> <laughs> 276. Ukitake's simps wonder if he's all right. They say they should be fighting with him, and the girl pictures him in all kinds of various objectified poses and packs a camera. The guy shows up in, like, medieval armor. Because he was packing armor. 277, Stark and Lil' Annette say they're going to use their secret weapon against these guys, and it, it, it's like a bunch of pop gun tricks, like flag banners and confetti and bullshit. And it was very funny. Yeah, no, these really help th these episodes a lot. Like, they do. They do. 278... This is to send off the current ED where they're in like Manhattan. They're literally in Manhattan and they miss the play home and it says new ED <laughs> next episode. <laughs> 279. Aizen shaved Shinji's head a hundred years ago while he was asleep. Shinji remembers this and sees and is like, it took me so long to grow my hair back. <laughs> 280. A new segment called the Seven Wonders of Karakura Town. Keigo asks Ichigo if he knows about the Seven Wonders. Late at night, you can hear guitar noises from the music room. Ichigo investigates and it's Shuhei and he says it sounds bad and he cries. Oh. Okay. 281. Dead spirits hover the outskirts of Karakura Town. It's Rinji practicing Shakaho. He sucks at it. Okay. That's good. 282. Footsteps can be heard in an abandoned building. It's where soul reapers come into the human world and Rangiku, Ikaku, Yumichika, and some other person come through and they just all trample Ishida. I mean, they all trample Ichigo. And Ichigo's like, why don't it's, they it's, notice me? It's really good. They're so <laughs> slow about right? it. That's the best part. 283. A ghost in white that floats is seen in an alley. Ichigo finds a minus and thinks it's it. It thinks it's them, them, but a hollow attacks and Ishida kills it, and they show him like floating on the spirit platform. It's it's him. 284. Monster cats have been appearing in long large numbers. It's Yoruichi teaching cats to talk for some reason. He's teaching them to say, I want tuna. <laughs> Dope. 285. Uh, rumor, there's rumors of a moving monokin. It's Rangiku storing her gigai there so it gets free clothes. Other people also do that. Ikaku is mad that his got put in a speedo. <laughs> 287. I mean, 286. Ichigo wishes he hadn't bothered inv in investigating any of these. Cone says there's still one left, and the, la the last one is Cone being a sex pest. It's like a, a, a teenager jumps around up into the sky and harasses women. Literally Spring-Heeled Jack. <laughs> yeah. 287. Illustrated, this, is, this was the Magic Lamp episode. Ishida explains the conceit of the episode. It's an alternate world. You end up in them by falling in holes. So he tells them Ichigo to avo avoid holes because Ichigo is clumsy and prone to falling in holes. Then a hole opens under them. Uh, this is so good. Because it has Rukia as Alice from Alice in Wonderland. It's so great. Yes, it did. Uh, yes, yes, it did. In fact, I put, uh, in fact, I put that is the uh, one of the spoiler images. Oh, that's the good. Second one. Yeah, that's that was great. I spent that whole episode going, you know, usually when they do this in an anime, they, they do Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> you know, the card soldiers look like enemies from a Toby Fox game. Yeah. They do. Mm. Oh, yeah. One other thing about that episode. Every time they showed uh, the Seirite, they just put the, like, um... The Aladdin's castle style tops on every part of every building. Yes, there. that's really funny. It cracked me up too much. <laughs> Two eighty eight. Asane feels like she's forgetting something. She forgot Hanataro. The the uh, the dub cuts out the actual joke entirely, which is that she is saying she like I forgot something. Hana something. Oh, Hana Megane, which means funny glasses. Poor Hana. And the dub com the dub completely cuts that out. A uh, 289. Mayuri will help you with your bad appearance. He offers plastic surgery and even gender reassignment surgery. He uses Keigo, Shinji, and Hiyori as examples of success stories. They're like, that isn't true. 
290, Arn Car Encyclopedia. It's about Toast, and he turns into a big fly man, and then he spits locusts on to fucking Gian. Okay. 291, Ichigo shows up. Shinji thinks he waited until he was in trouble and gets mad. That was it. Time to go to our segments. Cool. The first segment is going to be reviewing these opening endings. Well, it's one opening, two endings. Opening 12, Change by Miwa. This is the opening where it has Orihime singing with some hair sock in her mouth. Is Ichigo flies like Superman <laughs> and shows various moments of the Iron Car and the captain's fighting. Chris, what do you think of this opening? And remember, this is a one to ten scale. I thought this opening was pretty good. It is. It is very, very pretty. Mm-hmm. It's a very pretty opening. The song is pretty decent. It doesn't really light my world on fire. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. It's a strong showing, but not the peak. Anime to anime. Okay, so I'm I'm really torn here because I feel like there's something about this opening that like how much I like it is different as a feeling from how strong of a this is a fucking bleach opening it is on both <laughs> a song level and a visuals level. I'm gonna go with how much I like it combined with that. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. It's really strong. Mm -hmm. I wish I liked the song more. Is my major problem, right? Right. Um, there's just a certain quality of the song I rather dislike. It just it's a little it's a little nagging almost. It's a little abrasive in uh, what its vocals are mm -hmm. at certain parts of the song. But I really like Orihime just eating her fucking hair. <laughs> um, I like the animation style of it. I think it's really, really solid stuff, and it, it matches well with this being the okay. We got to start like s solving this character. This is problem. the fall of the Espada. This has got to be good. It's got to be good. Uh, so I'm gonna give it an A. It definitely would get a nine if it just had a better sound to it. Yeah, I also like. I like. I don't have a problem with the song, but it's not like it's not incredible. Mm -mm. But it is a really nice looking opening, and it cracks me up so much that they they have not just Ichigo, but other captains fly like like you see in DBZ and yes. stuff, not like you see in Bleach <laughs> at all. Right? Yeah, which is cool. I don't know if it's appropriate, but I like it. Uh, but I'm also going to give a Nate, Doctor Edgar. What do you think? Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you guys. Like this, it, it's a pretty OP. It's got some strong visuals. It's got some you know, appropriate visuals for an OP. We tell the story of the arc we're going through. The song is fine, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, so yeah, like this, this is a strong OP. I'd give it an eight. Yeah, and also in this OP, they show like Okiara's transformed state for such a short period of time, you can't even process it. But once you get past that point, you go, ah. Right? It, it's there's there's were one bizarre uh shot of, of, of Holly Bell just sort of splayed out uh on some rocks that's kind of weird. Uh. <laughs> uh we forgot to note when we hit talking about it uh th that transformation of old Kiora's is what's on the blu-ray box set. yes that is literally oh. yep. we were watching that in the last set of episodes we watched mm -hmm. so all through that last like the beast swords uh-huh had that on the cover the sword beasts yeah because they're beasts born from the swords not the swords Made out of beasts. I thought it Which was. I thought it? it was. I thought it was beast swords. Is it beast it was swords like beast or sword beasts? It's like what? They're, they're, they're sword beasts. They're sword beasts. Okay. Yeah, it's sword beasts. Okay. Okay. Because beast swords sounds like beast wars, and that's right. how I knew mm -hmm. I got it wrong that one time. What if it was made in CG and looked terrible? <sighs> what if <laughs> they do the bleach remake? That's like the Pokemon movie with the terrible CG. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, and they're the next Blu-rays that, are, that are, we're watching currently, I can't show Dan's cover to those either because they have something else on them. How do they keep doing <laughs> And then the set after that, it's just a picture of Rukia. Oh, cool. Great. <laughs> like, hey, thanks. Like dark Rukia? No. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> like regular. She has her Shikai. I know. Blowing some mm. minds here. Man, I, I'm now flashing back to a moment in Bleach where I thought when Rukia got to fight finally, it would be really awesome and she'd be strong as hell. That'd be cool. That's it? kind of the point of a character that you have them give in to the societal law uh -huh. and just let them, you know, like execute her. <sighs> mm -hmm. Like she's so strong. We will just, she's giving up. That's the main problem. 
No, it was, she wasn't strong. Yeah, either. she was not, was strong. That wasn't her it. going willingly was just a completely irrelevant fact of the situation. <laughs> All right, let's move on to talking about ED23, Stay Beautiful by Diggy Mo. And I will let Dan lead off on this one. This is the, the one where everyone wears fabulous outfits. They're in Manhattan and there's an upbeat song playing. Okay, let me, let me, let me stress something. You know how I said I really didn't like the OP song? Uh-huh. Like that there are just some abrasive elements of this? Yeah. This is a good song outside of the chorus, which is horrible. <laughs> just rock fucking bottom but the rest of it's so great visually nine out of ten everyone's got great outfits on which we will probably talk about in an upcoming segment very possible very possible dr agro yeah these these are striking visuals uh that this is a cool concept it's thoroughly executed it's novel it's really neat i love seeing it every time uh muted <laughs> <laughs> Wow, not a Diggy Mo appreciator. No, I do <laughs> not like this this California surfer accent in Japanese that happens sometimes in music. No, it this is, is the devil to this me. This is like everything you said plus in, uh, derogatory Fran Drescher impersonation on top of it. That is how annoying this sound is. Ugh. <sighs> but I mean... It's it's a really cool concept for an ED. I cannot deny it. There's a Don Kanonji Superman. Yeah. I can't give it less than like a seven. <laughs> yeah, we paused it. We're like, is that? Yeah, I was like, is that just Superman? Oh, no, no, it's just Don Kanonji. Okay. Everyone loves Don Kanonji. <laughs> Eisen's got a gun. I mean, come on. <laughs> he does yeah, this... have a gun. <laughs> Listener, you need to understand, we could spend the next three episodes of Chuggy Bleach just picking four fucking people dressed in this outro. Yeah, they're it's so cool good. that we're probably not getting one this good again. And that we got it in the same episode. We got the Arabian Nights episode. Right, which also had tons of great designs. Oh, yeah. Like, rookie, rookie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and go. I actually like the song. Ugh. I know. Controversial opinion. I think that the, the cut ins <laughs> with uh, them showing the Rangiku, uh, soy, not sorry, Fawn, uh, <laughs> Orihime, and y- Yoroichi all singing are really good. They are. And I really I, like this might be the, one of the best ones. I'm giving this a 10. This it is great. Prob- it probably, if, the, if, if I like the song, like, at all like if i if i just didn't absolutely despise that chunk of the song uh-huh. i'd give it a 10 i understand chris what were your thoughts uh i love diggy mo i love all diggy mo's song uh, songs i think his uh his soul eater ed is great oh he did one <laughs> nice uh yeah he did the third he did the third soul eater ed um, I, I do not have any problem with the weird surfer accent in Japanese that Agro does. And I think the visuals are great too. So I'm going to give this an eight out of 10. All right. And that means there's just one ED left. ED 24 echoes by universe. Uh, this is the one that opens up and there's like two kind of different segments to this ED. The first part is Orihime and Ichigo being sad in a destroyed Karakura town. And then it kind of transitions to just individual characters doing cool stuff on a black background. I think it actually looked pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... The song isn't nearly as good. It, it's such, it feels like such a big drop-off in basically every way from the last outro. Yeah. But it still has a nice art style to it. Like, I, I really appreciate how nice that they look when they're doing those individual cut-ins. But it's not going to stick with me. Like, I already can't quite recall how the song sounds. So I'm going to give it like a seven. Dan, what do you think? It's not strong and it's not terribly compelling, but it's also not terrible. And right. visually it looks competent at all, which <laughs> countless bleach endings do not rise to the occasion of. Yeah, look remember at the freaking time? cherry blossom one from last time. Right, that's what I was going to say. You remember mm-hmm. them sliding pictures? It's never been that bad. Never will be again, hopefully. <laughs> They should have just somehow done it out of order and taken that song, song uh, Life is Like a Boat, and shoved it over that one. <laughs> that way I could be like, negative one, the worst DT I've ever seen. Uh, I don't hate this one. It is a rough thing to follow up Stay Beautiful by Dickie Mo. It really isn't easy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of feel bad. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. I don't hate it. Yeah. It's 
well made in many regards, but it's no earworm. Mm -hmm. And holy shit, following up that last one's <laughs> hard. Uh, Chris, what do you think? This is like generic ED derogatory. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I get it. Like, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Dr. Agro? I loved this ED. Not just because I really didn't like the song and the one before it, <laughs> and hearing this felt like coming up for air. Uh, I I adored the, the the sections of animation at the beginning and the end. Um, I really loved all they did with limited animation and great effects work. It was it was strongly composed. It was it had good characterization. I really loved this song as an ED song. Uh, th this is one of my favorite ones of these we've seen so far. I'm giving it a nine. Easy. Cool. We really ran the gambit on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now time to move on to my favorite segment, the Best Dressed Award. And I will let you lead the way, Anime to Anime. Oh, hey. Uh, so you know that how that ED has so many amazing outfits. <laughs> well, in the background of one shot, Hannah Taro is wearing a maid outfit. <laughs> That is a really random thing to show into that one shot. I don't know why that's there, but it's a bold new look for Anataro. I'm giving it to him. It's just too powerful. It's too Every other outfit, I'm like, sure. You know, Metropolitan, snazzy. What happened? Anataro has ended up in a weird trade. <laughs> And he he's working new skills in the big city. <laughs> Chris Wolfart, who do you think was the best dressed other than Hannah Taro? Obviously, <laughs> obviously. I am going to give it to um to Lisa in the ED, the first ED, where she has the red dress, which is the fourth spoiler image I put in there. The red dress and the long arm warmers and the necklace. I think that's a nice outfit. I'm also going to give props to uh, the fifth spoiler damage. Not picking it, but I'm going to give props to Yoruichi as the singer because they gave her a black hairstyle, which I was not expecting at all. They said that mm. was a wig in one of the outros. It's true. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah a wig and a tight dress. <laughs> that's funny. I really do like your pick, though, Chris. Yeah, that, is, that was a great outfit. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I looked at that still for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All of these are really good. I'll go ahead and go. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose Street Urchin now. Uh, choose what? Uh, street Urchin now. She's uh my third spoilered image. It's strong. Yeah, she's just got a little hat and <laughs> is stealing stuff. It is delightful. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I, I, yeah, I really like uh, all their outfits in that shot. Mm -hmm. uh, I already forgot Green Hair's name again. Uh, but her her She's outfit there is really great. Morio something? No. No, I don't think that's right. I don't know. I kept calling her Froppy because <laughs> the green hair thing just made me think of the frog character from My Hero. Uh-huh. A, a fucking anime I haven't seen, but I saw that design once and I was like, that's adorable. Should I watch this? And Bob said, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> um, something else I want to point out. My other two spoiled images above that. Uh huh. If you look at the guy in the far right, he's the captain with who's blonde hair and glasses we were talking uh -huh. about earlier. Yes. If you look on the next image, that is a character Jujutsu Kaisen, who I'm pretty sure is the exact same character. <laughs> 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 just pointing that out. They aren't winners, but just it's there. And Dr. Egger, you get to finish this off for these. I want to state for the record that um, I was, for a lot of these episodes, probably going to give it to Baragon's Resurrection. Mm -hmm. His black and purple Lord Walnir with the blinged out battle axe and the skull face. It was a really strong look. Um, but then in a single cut, uh, he fucked it up. What <laughs> are those? <laughs> Pointy toed ass mummy wrapped cowboy boots. No, no, no thank you. Absolutely not. Mm, mm -mm. Not even necessary. Didn't even need feet. Never used them. That's true. 
So I decided to give it to Tosin's first holification. <laughs> that shit is clean. <laughs> it's like... It's like if Hakuman said, sun's out, guns out. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tosin, like with this set of flashbacks, I think he has had more hairstyles in this series than any other character. Yeah, he does have yeah, a maybe. lot. Yeah, I think you're right. Hmm. Anyway, here's a picture of Hanataro on the maid dress. I just figured <laughs> you need to everyone know. else got to post theirs. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised Googling Hanataro bleached in a maid dress literally resulted in the funniest, like, multiple images put vertically above each other of S Zoom and <laughs> We needed this. That boy's got legs. <laughs> God, I actually wrote down a ton of different options for this one. Just, there were so many good outfits, not even outside the the EDs and stuff. Like uh -huh. um, the the apparent Bankai for the guy with the with the knife, like mm. that that his steel arms, really cool. He's like the Colossus. It is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know I was gonna give it to Rookie Rookie if not Hanataro. Yeah. I I was mm -hmm. I was gonna give it to Rookie Alice in Wonderland because that. It's great that was great that too. was great they started playing that ed and i'm like oh shit i kind of want to watch this episode <laughs> as well they should have done that <laughs> that would have been great all right and that's everybody for that section we are now can we just take out like this ed full of characters and outfits and just carry it on for the cold winter <laughs> that's ahead of us i'm like, sure there'll be god's other great <laughs> outfits i'm sure there fucking better be i need something right um, speaking of something, Dan, you have to tell us on a scale of 1 to 10 how excited you are to continue watching Bleach. Now, we've done a lot of talking mm -hmm. about how things were executed here, how backstories were botched, etc., etc., how dumb certain battles were, but you know what? At the end of the day, that's all behind us. Right. Anything could be in front of us. I'm giving it a 10 again. Nice! Let's do it! Wow! Yeah, I am the super confidence. excited. We will discover what was Aizen's plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's all been leading up to this. Outside of the movie, we, we got to watch it between. Yes. Broadly speaking. Also, I'm excited for a movie. A movie could be anything. Yeah, that one could movie be was incredible. Yeah, I, I remember. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah, I remember this movie being really good. Okay, great. Like, I remember it being significantly better than what I expected. So I'm excited to go back to it and see if I was incredibly wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I really am. All right. Now we got to rate these episodes on our patented tightness scale going zero to 25. And I will lead us off here. Despite how much we talked about things being botched and how rough it was for women... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's that's gotta be in the description of every show shonen pod shonen anime podcast in human history. Continue, please. I'm sorry. Uh, watching through it was not too bad. I feel like it had a pretty decent brisk pace to things, even if all the explanations were bad. And there were a couple of cool fights in here. I'm going to give it a 17. There's a lot of room to grow, but it wasn't as bad as a filler. And with that, I hand it off to Dr. Agro. Yeah, this, this batch of episodes, especially taken at a gallop, uh, was a whole lot of fun, especially considering some of the other batches we have seen. Uh, <laughs> this starts with the Ulkiora fight, and that momentum carried me through a lot of it. I kept I kept looking away from my TV and going, am I, am I having a lot of fun watching Bleach right? right now? Yeah. Right? Now, afterwards, upon reflection, when a lot of these realities came to light, <laughs> I was like, oh, man, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, the visors are here. The visors are done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The visors are now waiting for Ichigo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> know your place. <laughs> Ichigo uh becomes the king of unearned power-ups in this arc. Um Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had a whole lot of fun watching these episodes. I I'd, I'd be willing to give it like a 20. Yeah. All right. Chris, what do you think? 
This set of episodes reopened so many old wounds. Mm. <laughs> Even if going at the clip we went, it wasn't that bad. I can only give this like a 12. Fair. <laughs> I get it. I was there too. Dan, what do you think? How tight? This was the set of episodes that I think sealed the deal on me thinking Kubo does not know. Or, once again, it could be his editor's fault. Mm -hmm. How the fuck to write Shonen? So many different elements of, like, tries to do a JoJo, it sucks and is dumb. Uh, tries to write a backstory, it's terrible because it's a woman. And then it's terrible because I guess he's just a weird incel. <laughs> uh, all that's terrible. But let me tell you, like Agro was saying, I had a lot of fun watching this. And only a coward would let the shambling corpse of the structure, the support struts of what was the lore, the plan, the organization of all of these plot elements falling apart in front of him. Let him change his score. I'm giving it a 20 fucking two. <laughs> all right. Mm. That momentum shit aggro said is absolutely the core of it. That shit was hype. And I just rode the momentum off of that for the rest of it. Yeah, that, that stuff was with Ulkior is really cool. Yes. And I feel like there is a strong dip right after that, but then it brings it back near the end of the set. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it worked out. Uh, so I don't I don't hate Stark as much as everyone else. <laughs> right. <laughs> that helps. I, I get why everyone else hates Stark. He's really fucking stupid <laughs> and a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i don't know i uh i appreciate out of all of the enemies he's the one that has a distinctly different personality even if his personality is a bunch of weird uh-oh talking at collar moments <laughs> at least he's not holly bell who's like my theme is sacrifice which is why i let my subordinates get killed which you that her scene makes no sense. No, she did not sacrifice them to do something. No. She was unable to protect them. That's very different. No, that's totally the same it's as far nothing. as that conversation went with that one guy. It made no sense. That was so stupid. Uh, but no, I had a great time watching this. Um, I'm hoping the next will be even better. Um, I feel like there's actually a pretty good chance. Yeah. The next two, I guess, because the movie could be hype that, as fuck. That's true. There's the movie we got to go through first. I'm so excited to find out what Aizen's fucking plan was. Because <laughs> if something about, you know, Karakura is going to be the source of a thing to craft the thing, yeah, to we, be we, the he, thing, he needs, to do he the needs stuff. To make, he, needs to, he needs to destroy Karakura Town to make a key to go kill the Soul King. Which sure. I'm, I'm so excited to hear about the Soul King. I'm so, I'm so excited. so excited. Better, better stay excited for a while. I'm so, for, you mean like, like until two episodes from now? Yeah, when of course. I, uh, okay, okay. You, the way you said that. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> the way you said mm -hmm. that had me a little, I'm very excited for the next episodes of Chugging Bleach. <laughs> I hope you are too. <laughs> um, speaking of which, the next episode, we're watching not just the movie Hellverse which is the Forest Bleach movie. Ooh. But there's also a prologue, which is episode 299 of the regular TV show. So watch that, but pause it before you see next time on. That will be very <laughs> important. <laughs> Do not watch that. Don't even watch the golden. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You'll have to... No, you're not going to get that. You're going you're gonna to see something and, you don't want to see. And if you don't trust yourself enough, just watch the movie. Fair. You can watch that later. So uh, come back next month where we're not covering an insane amount of stuff. We're just covering wow. a movie. Wow. That's going to be weird. It is. Hmm. It's going to be like a concise story. It's about hell. Something that's only been one episode of Bleach. I'm Wait, excited. It's, true. it's about what? Hell. hell. Yeah, hell. No, it's no hang on. That doesn't, let, let, let me check my list. Serete, Karakura Town, Hueco Moon. No, I'm sorry. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, right, girl. You weren't here for the one episode it came up in earlier. It was like episode 10. It was. Is this the Grand Fisher movie? No. Damn it. No, the Grand ah! Fisher is that. We, Dan, we already killed him. We had a. Yeah, he's already dad dead. killed him. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. That was so. I have to wonder. I don't remember. They might bring back the guy who was sent to hell. Like <gasps> that, that random murderer. Oh, my God. That would be so cool if it is what happens. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> This is going to be a great movie. And they're going to explain the Soul King in it. <laughs>
Goodbye. Hey, before you down that jug of bleach, how about you head on over to patreon.com slash GB podcast. You can get the next episode of Chugging Bleach early and help support us doing insane seven year long endeavors like watching all of Bleach. We also do many other shows that you can get extras for. And if you ascend to Vasto Pod Lordes, you'll even get credit for it on Big Think Dimension, our weekly gaming podcast. If not, that's fine. We'll see you next time you're thirsty for some bleach. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, very best plot, iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.